With modding as a hobby, dead electronics carcasses start to pile up, literally. And if you think that's a lot, just have a look at what real modders have lying around in their attic. Instead of leaving those cases to catch dust, it would be better to find something to do with them. Why not use one of these to make a Nintendo Switch dock, and use the extra space in the case to put in a GameCube controller adapter? If you didn't know already, GameCube controllers are now compatible with the Switch. You can basically play any game with them. This project is a gamble on the idea that, in the future, this compatibility will be used for games like Smash or GameCube games. Oh, and if you get lost or bored in this video, remember the description has time codes so you can skip to whatever part interests you. We don't need much to reach our goal. Mainly, a GameCube case, a Switch dock, and a GameCube controller adapter. The slot that will house the Switch will be 3D printed, rather than gluing the original one straight inside the case. And, for additional authenticity, the original GameCube ports can be glued inside the case. Good thing those weren't thrown away. We'll start by copying the design of the Switch dock on the computer, then prepare the GameCube case. And finally, we'll tear down the Switch dock, try not to break any of its expensive parts, and assemble the new dock. The first step is to reproduce the basic features of the circuit board found inside the original Switch dock. Once we know its dimensions, we will be able to quickly design a little support to screw it on. Measuring these circuits and ports isn't easy. Sometimes it can be easier to take a picture with a scale bar on it and then measure on the computer. For instance, in Photoshop, it's really easy to resize the image to an actual size in centimeters and then measure on it. Even then, there will be many imperfections. To get rid of those, we'll do at least one test print. From this draft, we will adjust the 3D model with a real-life comparison to the Switch dock circuit board. The GameCube case is crudely modeled as a cuboid with the right dimensions. It will help us visualize the layout of the components in space, but also figure out if the cables are long enough and if everything will fit. With all the components in the right place, we can safely design the new components and be sure they'll fit together. The circuit board is positioned in a spot where the ports are accessible, but also where there's enough clearance for the USB cables to reach it, thus eliminating the need to solder it. Since the switch dock is a very pricey item, this will be designed with the idea that it can be taken apart if needed. With the circuit board positioned, we can start designing the switch slot. The GameCube model is detailed a bit, with information like the thickness of the walls and the width of the cutout. It will help the switch slot fit the GameCube even better. This is basically a replica of the switch dock. All the little bumps are reproduced as identically as possible. We want the switch to fit in it and connect without any resistance. This will require at least one test print to adjust the measurements, which were mostly eyeballed. The addition of a little bump on each side will ensure it fits tightly into the case. When you insert it, it shouldn't be able to fall out. And then, when we glue it, it will be strongly bonded to the case. You can see that those cutouts overhang on the inside of the case. The spring-loaded USB port at the bottom needs to be screwed from underneath. This would mean that the whole slot would have tiny screw posts on its bottom. Since this will be 3D printed, it is safer to keep a flat bottom. Otherwise, the object would just fall out of the print bed. You could get away with supports, but that would require a lot of work. A more practical solution is to make a cutout on the slot, keep its bottom flat, and have the screw posts printed separately, and then glue them in the cutout. On the computer, we can prepare the cutout so that the screw post part aligns itself in the hole, making it very easy to glue the two parts together. These screw posts are really tiny and flimsy. We can't really make them bigger because they must get inside a cutout on the original part of the dock. But we'll try to make them as sturdy as possible by giving them a big base. The little triangle bump is very important to line up the console to the port. The little support for the circuit board is basically just the screw posts connected by a plane. It is simply designed to present the ports at an acceptable height at the backside of the GameCube. Designing it just consists of transferring the hole cutouts from the PCB model onto another plane. Then we reduce the size of the holes to make sure the screws will hold tightly. 
Finally, we extrude the actual posts with an acceptable thickness and connect them with plastic. This model doesn't need to be more complicated. It will be glued to the inside of the case and won't be seen. However, if it was to be redone, it'd be smarter to make it so that the circuit goes upside down on it. That way, the clearances for the USB ports would be even more lenient. For the same reasons as before, it is much safer to design it with a flat surface on the bottom. The final step of designing these on the computer is to export them as an STL. This format can be read by slicer software like Cura. Once imported in the slicer, you can decide the quality of the print, the temperature, and all sorts of things. Once you sliced the STL with a slicer, you basically made a file telling the printer what to do on each layer. For the final print, a layer height of 0.1 mm will give a smoother end result. The density is set to 20% to save time, and the walls are set to 1.2 mm for increased sturdiness of the print. Here's the result. The switch dock looks pretty good compared to the original, even though you can definitely tell that it was 3D printed. Luckily, we won't see it much in the GameCube case. The other parts seem great. We'll see if they fit when we assemble everything. Now that we have our final prints, we can move on to modifying the GameCube case to house them. We've already decided on the position of every component. We can just mark up the case with a pen and start cutting. Since the case will be cut right in the middle, some parts, like the lid, could fall out. To avoid that, let's use a bit of hot glue. This will allow us to treat the top of the GameCube case as one solid block. It will be much easier to handle when cutting, and it ensures the seams are kept consistent. We'll also glue the buttons. Otherwise, without the actual buttons underneath, they'd fall flat. The initial cut is done with a Dremel. This cut needs to be clean. Since there won't be any painting, we need to avoid scratching the case. It would be preferable to have a flat and even cut line to coincide with the 3D printed slot. For this, the best method is to cut smaller than needed and finish up the cut by sanding slowly to the right size. That way you can't overshoot it and the slot will fit perfectly. This is the part where you want to be careful and not scratch the case. Then, the hole is sanded with a makeshift sander with scrap plastic and high grit sandpaper. To save some time, you can also start to flatten the cut line with a sharp knife by running it along the edges. This took about an hour overall, sanding hard and periodically checking the size of the 3D printed slot. Now that the hole has been carefully sanded, we can insert the switch slot in it. The hole is purposefully a little tight. You know you have a good fit when you can insert a piece without much force and yet it doesn't fall out. Having these two parts almost hold together already ensures that when we glue them together, they'll stay put. But since this is quite tight, let's verify that the tolerances weren't altered and that the switch fits and lines up with the port in the bottom. Then let's just drench the junction of the two pieces with hot glue and epoxy. As you may notice from these images, the GameCube case has quite large vent holes on the side. Since we removed the insides of the case, nothing will be behind those holes and we'll be able to see through the case. To prevent that, some scrap plastic was given a single coat of leftover spray paint. At the back of the case, there are small vent holes. We'll have the ports of the switch dock stick out through there, right under the original GameCube ports. To preserve the look, let's add a little bit of our painted scrap plastic before drilling the holes. Luckily, sparkling silver spray paint is pretty common. The finish is very similar to the paint used on these gray GameCubes. If you didn't know, these GameCubes weren't shiny because of the plastic. The plastic is actually just gray and painted in shiny silver. Thus, these GameCubes are more prone to scratching than the black or purple ones which is why we need to be careful when handling this project. Same thing for the sides of the case. Little bits of scrap plastic are cut with a knife and glued on the inside, making sure not to scratch the fresh paint. The result is pretty seamless, especially considering this took minimal effort. Before we assemble all the parts together, we need to tear down the original switch dock. It opens with special tri-wing screws, and then Phillips screws for the inner parts. We'll be able to reuse those screws in our assembly. 
you can see the very small switch dock circuit board with its flat cable that goes to the spring-loaded port inside the slot. You can also see a small two-wire connection that goes on the underside. This is for the green LED that turns on when the switch displays to the TV. It would be way more authentic if instead of this green LED, we had the orange LED from the original GameCube light up when the switch is connected. At the end of the two-pin connector, there's nothing more than the LED on a tiny board. This means that the resistor associated with it is probably on the dock circuit board. This would mean that we could just put another naked LED in place of the green one and directly wire it to the two-pin connector. To keep the switch dock intact, it would be better not to solder it. Luckily, some leftover connectors can be reused instead of the original one. This two-pin connector was part of an old PlayStation 1 screen, and it fits perfectly. This project is definitely proving that hoarding stuff can be useful in the end. We'll quickly desolder the GameCube LED from its original controller port board, and then connect it to the two-pin connector for testing. And luckily, it seemed to work right away. The final step is to then elongate this wire so that it can reach the front of the GameCube case by soldering it to leftover wires from old computers and hot gluing the connections. Then, let's simply drench the LED in hot glue in the right position. This isn't very elegant, but there's no need to save space here, and this method is quicker. The final part to tear down from the switch dock is the Type-C port on the bottom. It is connected to the bottom of the slot with four screws. The parts we designed match those screw posts and leave enough space for the spring mechanism to work as intended. Normally, assembling this in the case should be a simple transfer from the original dock to the new one. After verifying that the screw holes line up, we can superglue the 3D printed screw posts where we intended them to be. Since there is a flat contact surface between the two pieces, they should be bonded together strongly. The switch dock circuit board will fit perfectly in the cutout where the GameCube power regulation board used to be. With the added height of the 3D printed support, the ports will be where we want them. We just need to remove bits of plastic to clear space to glue in the 3D printed support. With the height and position decided, we can put the circuit board in front of the wall we need to drill. Then, let's trace the cutouts of the ports and drill them out. To accurately cut holes, you need to take your time when marking the outlines, which wasn't the case here. The holes were quickly cut with a Dremel and a sharp knife. The result isn't perfect. Sanding the holes with a nail file can help, but the result is still subpar. Luckily, those ports aren't directly in view, but still, more attention should be paid to them. Once the ports are cut, the very final position of the circuit can be decided. Let's put the circuit in front of the ports and screw it on its support to then glue the support to the case. That way, everything lines up. The support is permanently secured with a good amount of epoxy glue. After that, the case is basically ready to house all the components. So let's assemble this thing. To make sure everything will fit, let's give the switch holder slot some breathing room by grinding some of the insides of the GameCube casing. Then, it's time to glue in the cosmetic ports. We can recover the power input port from its small circuit board. And then, just glue it on the backplate. The back video ports are glued and screwed in. They also naturally line up. The memory card ports can be screwed in the case as they are supposed to. The original screws are used. That way, they will perfectly line up to the front part of the case. You'll notice that parts of the original GameCube circuit board are kept. Those are the parts that have ports underneath. That way, we can serve the original ports on the underside of the GameCube. This serves absolutely no purpose. It's purely cosmetic. Just like on a normal GameCube, you can open up the small doors on the bottom and find the ports there. With the ports in place, we can install the dock circuit board. Making sure to have connected the flat cable before, because it will be out of reach once the circuit is screwed to its support. Let's reuse the original dock screws. Now it's time to put the controller adapter in the case. This adapter is an inexpensive knockoff of the original Wii U one. It will work perfectly for our needs. Just make sure to test everything before putting it in the case. You'll find a link to it in the description if ever you are interested in this mod. 
Removing its screws reveals a rather small circuit board inside. Interestingly enough, the controller ports aren't directly soldered through hole on the PCB, probably to save money and avoid the hassle of a 90 degree connection. Even better for our needs, it will fit even better in the space we left for it in the case. So far, this has been a really easy mod on the electronics side of things. Here's the only tricky part. Luckily, it's optional. In order to not solder the expensive circuit board of the switch dock, we'll connect the dock through USB as normal. But the USB plugs will interfere with the switch slot, which takes a large part of the case. So, we'll just strip the USB plugs with a knife and resolder them at a right angle. You could also just bend them, but resoldering them is faster. As you can see, they could have been made much smaller if needed. After having tested that the adapter works on the switch, let's glue the ports behind the front of the case, making sure they can resist the force of inserting a GameCube controller cable. Having secured all the connections with hot glue, let's let the PCB dangle a little bit so it has the possibility to place itself in the case. We can now put in the front of the case. The whole length of the USB cable is kept inside of the case. There's more than enough space, so why not? The only real difficult part is screwing the spring-loaded port on the switch slot. It has to be mounted on the top of the case, but the circuit board is on the bottom, and the flat cable connecting the two is very small. The measurements proved to be right, as eventually the case did close. But it wasn't easy, and it involved tightening the port's screws from a really odd angle. Finally, the four original screws are used to close the case. And here we have it, the switch dock works as expected. The switch lines up in it, it connects, and outputs to the TV. The original GameCube LED lights up, and the GameCube controllers can be connected seamlessly. You can even wake the console up with a GameCube controller, eliminating the need for Joy-Cons if ever Nintendo uses this feature for games. It's possible that GameCube games appear on the Virtual Console, or that this will work in Smash Bros. If it does happen, this dock will actually prove useful in its ability to pack up the adapter and the dock in one object. Also, if you're not a fan of the door mechanism on the Switch dock, this one gives you direct access to the ports at the back. But this might just be a false hope. It might just be Nintendo widening support for controllers on the Switch. Remember that many controllers are already compatible with the Switch. And even more concerning, the GameCube controllers show up as USB, reinforcing the idea that they might just be seen as any controller. But now that Smash has been announced, GameCube controllers will most likely be compatible. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel for more. And if you want pictures and updates on future projects, follow the Rated E Mods Facebook or Twitter.